Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Let us all rise and give God the glory this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, church, and set the atmosphere of worship and praise to our God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus.
Every cat 
was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of
Let's continue to worship the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. We lift our hands up to you, Lord, to honor you, to recognize, oh God, that it is only because of you we have this life. Because of you we live, we move, and we have our being. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor of serving you. We thank you, Lord, that you have enlightened our mind you have quickened our spirit, and we have responded to your wonderful plan in our lives. Dear Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Lord, we recognize, O oh God, before you, that we have sinned against you. We have failed you in many ways. Lord, we have disappointed you. We have disobeyed you, O oh God. Lord, we ask you to forgive us from all of our sins. Lord, all the thoughts that we have entertained, the lifestyle, O oh God, that we enjoy. Lord, the gentle reminder of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit that we purposely ignore. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to give us a new heart. Create in us a clean and pure heart, O Lord, a heart that will follow hard after you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You said in your word, humble yourself before the Lord, and he will exalt you. You said, O Lord, that if you confess your sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us, from all of our unrighteousness. That's why right now we come into your throne, O oh God, and we plead guilty before you. And we are asking you, Lord, cleanse us, Lord. God, we don't want to walk in disobedience before you. We want to submit ourselves before you, Lord. Lord, we want to surrender everything unto you. Because you know what is the best for us. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, God. Lord, we enthrone you into this place, O oh God. Lord, that's the reason why we are in this place, Lord. And that is to commune with you, Lord. 
out of our obedience to your holy words, O oh God. Lord, we want you. We want you, Lord Jesus. We want your tangible presence, O oh God, to just embrace each one of us. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We worship you. Lord, be with us, Lord. Do whatever you desire to accomplish in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give him a celebrational clap offering. Can we make it louder and stronger? Can we just say thank you, Lord? Amen and amen. You may be seated. And while you're doing that, can you greet one another? And say, God bless you. May the Lord bless you. The creator of the heavens and the earth. And we want to greet our brothers and sisters that are watching live right now. So many of them are watching live right now because they are not in the church. <laughs> they must be on a vacation. We bless them. Amen. Pastor Jim and I just came back from Alberta. We had such a wonderful time. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> We truly enjoy Alberta, we enjoy the mountains, and of course, the family, and our brothers and sisters, some of them are in the Philippines, may the Lord bless you, I know it's 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night, so I hope you're watching, no, it's okay, you can watch the replay, praise God, did you guys enjoy the Canada Day, are you guys Canadian, eh? No? <laughs> happy Canada Day. Are you guys happy that we are living in this beautiful land? Let us pray for this land. Let us pray for this land. Quickly, I'm going to say a short prayer. Father, we thank you for this land, O oh Lord, that you blessed us. Thank you, Lord. God, we remember, Lord, all the political leaders the leadership in this land, we pray, O oh God, that they will uphold righteousness in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for the political, for the educational system, for all the business aspect, the economic aspect, Lord. Lord, every spears of the society, we plead the blood of Jesus. And we're asking you, Lord, that you will raise up your men and women, God, to lead and to be a place of position, Lord, that will lead your people in righteousness and in the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us in this land. We bless this land, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let us give thanks to the Lord that we are living in this beautiful country. Amen. I just want to welcome somebody is very, very happy today. Someone actually, and that is Brother Bill. Because his family are here, right? Bill and May, of course. So without further ado, we want to welcome Bill Bonifacio's family. So please stand up, the mom, the dad, the sister, and the brother-in-law. Come on. Woo, thank you, Jesus. That is a Skyway welcome. God is good, and they are related to me. They are my cousins. <laughs> you can see later on, they are beautiful people. And, you know, it ran in the jeans. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God is good, isn't it? We are all beautiful because of Jesus. Now, let us read the scriptures that is taken in Psalm 117. Psalm 117. How many verse is in that scripture? Only two verse. Only two verses, and it is easy to memorize. Psalm 117, and then after that, we are going to declare the promises of God in our life. Amen. Psalm 117. Let all the people praise the Lord. Read it with me. Praise the Lord, 
all you Gentiles. Loud him, all you peoples. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good? You know, we are Gentiles because we are not Israelites. Amen. And we are here in Skyway. So let us read it one more time. Amen. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Loud him, all you peoples. For the merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give him another round of applause. God is good. When we are clapping our hands, we truly understand what we are doing. We are giving praise to our blessed Trinity. Amen. Now let us declare the promises of God in our lives. And I know you desire this to happen too in your life. Let us declare it. Declare, we proclaim, we agree, amen. I declare that I am blessed. I declare that I am blessed with God's supernatural wisdom, and I have a clear direction for my life. I declare that I am blessed with creativity, with courage, with ability, and with abundance. I declare that I am blessed with a strong will, with self-control, and self-discipline. I declare that I am blessed with great family, with good friends, with good health, with faith, favor, and fulfillment. Do you desire that in your life? Amen. Me too. I declare that I am blessed with success, with supernatural strength, with promotion, and with divine protection. I declare that I am blessed with an obedient heart and with a positive outlook on life. I declare that any curse ever spoken over me, any negative evil word that has come ever, ever, that has Thank you. I declare that I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. I am blessed when I go in, and I am blessed when I go out. I declare that everything that I put my hands on to do is going to prosper and succeed. I declare I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now let's listen to our announcement. Praise God. Hey, Skyway family. We're glad you were able to make it today, whether you're joining us online or in person. At Skyway, we offer many ways to stay connected with God throughout your whole entire week. So make sure to join us for these reoccurring events. Every Sunday at 10 a.m., we offer a Sunday service. You may anticipate a welcoming into a secure and caring environment. Our Sunday morning services is a celebration of our common identity in Christ. We'd love to see you and your family, so come see us in person at 76 Crawford Boulevard or watch the live stream on Facebook. Join us for our Sunday service and let's praise God together. Also, our Real Talk services with Pastor Alice takes place every Sunday at 7 p.m. Make sure to join us on our Facebook live stream as Pastor Alice discusses how the Bible interprets real life circumstances and other people's testimony. Let's have a real talk. We offer midweek prayer meetings with Pastor Jim every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. on Facebook Live and 7 p.m. in person. Take some time out of your day for a refreshing time for God's Word. 
Our youth services are held every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Come join us through our Google Meet if you are between the ages of 13 and 19. There are games, challenges, a social lesson, and the words to be found here. You can also join us for a special in-person service once a month, so keep tuned for additional information. Please contact Lorreen Sanchez for further information if you are interested. Our Friday evening services with Pastor Jim takes place every Friday at 7 p.m. Join us on Facebook for a live stream and to discover what God's Word has in store for you. Calling all young worshipers ages 12 and above are invited. We welcome you to join us for our extended worship team every Saturday at 11 a.m. Join us for worship, devotion, and fellowship. Please contact Abigail Salvanera for additional information. Finally, we have our home Bible study groups. Contact Bill Bonifacio to join our group and begin connecting and fellowshipping with others through our home Bible study groups. We have a variety of options for you to contribute an offering to Skyway Christian Assembly. If you're visiting us in person, you can give your chosen contribution by either filling out your given envelope or using our Interact machine, which takes all debit cards, MasterCard, and Visa. You can also donate by e-transferring your preferred amount to give at skywayca.org if you are online and watching our Facebook broadcast. If you are in need of prayer, please contact us through our Facebook page and we would gladly pray for you. Visit skywayca.org to see our most recent Sunday and Real Talk services, as well as discover more about who Skyway Christian Assembly is as a church. These are our weekly events, Skyway. To stay up to speed on what's going on here at Skyway Christian Assembly, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Summer has just begun, Skyway, and we have so much planned for you throughout the month of July. Please save the dates for the following events. Firstly, we would like to extend an invitation to attend this year's Taste of Lawrence. It will be taking place from July 8 to 9. This is a time to propagate God's word to others, but also to enjoy the activities available as a church. Second, we will be hosting a church picnic. This event will occur on July 16th. Expect a time of enjoyment to reconnect with others and create special memories as a church. Third, we will be bringing back our Sports Fest event. Join us on July 17th. Anticipate a fun day to be active through sports and activities. All is welcome from the children to the young at heart. Lastly, for the month of July, we will be having a VBS for children ages 4 to 12. Join us from Monday to Friday throughout July 11 to 29. This year's theme is Rolling River Rampage. Make sure to stay updated on our social media pages for any important info regarding these events. Let's get ready to have fun this summer at Skyway Christian Assembly. See you soon. Hello, Skyway family. Taste of Florence is happening this weekend on Friday, July 8th and Saturday, July 9th. We will be reaching out to our community. In Matthew 28, verse 19, it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need you to help us spread the love of God to our community. Want to volunteer? Please contact Abigail Salvanera. We hope to see you there. But when God gives prophecy, it's for the sake of comforting believers and warning unbelievers. And you can tell your response to prophecy by how you respond. Mm. My response to prophe prophecy is I'm comforted. Mm. I want Jesus to come today. So, and I tell people, live like Jesus isn't coming or, or, or plan like Jesus isn't coming for 100 years. Get married, have kids, invest, live your life. But live like he's coming today. Yeah. Mm. Get ready for Jesus today. So I don't, I'm not for hunkering down and just, you know, not living my life. And you were telling the story about, I think, buying a house. And, you know, yeah. and your dad thought, you don't buy it. It was 1980s. Don't buy a house. <laughs> Jesus is coming. Yeah. Buy a house. Have babies. Yeah. You know, li live your life. But understand that Jesus is coming. And it's comforting. It's comforting to know that at any moment, 
He's going to come for us and take us. And I, I have people that say, well, I want to graduate from college, and I, I want to have babies, and I want to get my degree. And I, want to, I, I totally understand that. But can I just tell you, when you, Jesus, when you see Jesus' face, you're not going to think, can I go back and eat one more pizza? Right. You know, can, can I go back and get my, my savings account? You will never look back yeah. when you see the face of Jesus. So make a prognostication. You're not seeing the end of the world by September, October, November of this year. That's not happening in your Well, your the, the next major event that's going to happen, in my opinion, is the rapture of the church. And when the rapture occurs, there's seven more years left. And I was talking about Daniel 9, where Gabriel came to Daniel mm -hmm. and told him about the 490 prophetic years. Well, there's seven years left. And Gabriel said to Daniel that the Antichrist will make a covenant with Israel for one week. That's seven years. Okay. And in the middle of the week, uh, he'll commit the abomination of desolation. Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about that in 2 Thessalonians 2. He says that he sits as God in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Revelation 13 says he speaks pompous words against the Most High and against his sanctuary. So there is going to be a rebuilt temple in Israel. Okay, there, and there's a lot of activity on the Temple Mount. You guys know you're over there. For the first time in 2,000 years, the Jews are going to the temple every day and praying, and they're not stopping them. Okay, a group of them are going up and praying, and they're trying to have services, temple services on the Temple Mount. There's going to be a rebuilt temple. In the middle of that week, that seven-year period of time, there's going to be a rapture, it, and that rapture begins that seven-year period of time. Um, and the Antichrist, the first three and a half years of the tribulation is the rise of the Antichrist and the ministry of the two witnesses, which I believe are Enoch and Elijah, on the Temple Mount. And they're preaching the gospel. They're doing signs and wonders. They're untouchable. Uh, and the world absolutely hates them. Absolutely. When they're, when they're killed by the Antichrist in Revelation 11, the entire world celebrates and sends gifts to each other. Okay. That begins the Great Tribulation, which is the last three and a half years that Jesus said, unless those days would have been cut short, no flesh would have survived. So we have, in my opinion, the next thing that's going to happen is the rapture of the church. And my encouragement to everybody, well, too. So if, if you're listening to this, I hope you're, you will receive Jesus as Lord of your life and get ready. It's the most important decision you'll make in all of eternity. The second thing is this. If you love, if you love people, you don't want them to go through the tribulation. Mm -hmm. and, and I would encourage them to buy my book. I would encourage them to get on, online, find stuff on YouTube or whatever they can. But they need to understand these are serious times. But the most serious thing is not COVID-19. The most serious thing is the return of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Is if you're not ready, the 10, 10 virgins, the bridegroom came at the midnight hour and the five wives were ready and they went in. The five foolish, they were locked out. And they're, they're on the outside now. And when the rapture comes and you're playing around with God and you're waiting for tomorrow and all that kind of stuff, all of a sudden the rapture happens, you're trapped in a world that makes this look like a Sunday school party. Did you just dodge my question? <laughs> what you think? <laughs> so, um, so I was I'm trying. I just didn't think you noticed. So you don't see in your timeline, your personal timeline, <laughs> that the end of the world is September, October, or November of this year? Absolutely not. Think? Okay. So you dismiss that outright. I, I do. Because of Jesus' description of the end times, and the next thing that would have to happen would be the rapture. Yeah, okay. business as usual. Luke 17, where Jesus describes that, the business as usual, he describes the rapture. Okay. You know. So the end of the world, as it would you know, be depicted in movies, uh, is after the church is gone. That's right. The, the, it's really, there's no such thing as the end of the world. It's the end of the age. Okay. Okay. The, the, there's a, grace is an age, and it stops. And so uh, we're in an age of grace right now. Grace means forgiveness. It means a free gift. And so right now, as a free gift, we can all receive Jesus and be forgiven of our sins, even during the tribulation, but not at the end of the tribulation. Mm -hmm. When Jesus returns at the end of the tribulation, it says he come as a king full of fierceness and wrath, and he will rule the nations with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now think about this for just a minute. This is, this is interesting. Uh, we rule and reign with Jesus for a thousand years, and we have new bodies. We're immortal during the, during the thousand year rule of Christ. There's the rapture. There's the last seven years, the tribulation. There's the second coming. And then Jesus rules the earth with us for a thousand years. But there are mortals on the earth. And Satan is bound for a thousand years. Satan doesn't operate for a thousand years. Well, these people that are on the earth are mortals. And none of them get saved. 
Not one person gets saved during the entire millennium. You say, well, why are they there? Okay, now think about this for just a minute. First of all, they all survived the tribulation. Mm -hmm. There are people in, in Revelation, it says, they sought death and they couldn't find it. There are people that I believe are alive today that they are so rebellious toward God and they are so in your face against God God's going to say to them, I'm not going to let you die during the tribulation. I'm going to make you live under a thousand years of my rule. My goodness. At the end of the thousand year millennial rule of Christ, Satan is un unbound. And he comes and it says to the Gog, Gog and Magog, and he leads the entire world in rebellion. And they come to the camp of the saints in the holy city. This is where we live with Jesus. We're the saints. They come to Jerusalem to try to kill us and Jesus. And that's when Jesus sets up the great white, kills all of them, sets up the great white throne judgment. But there will be people right now that are alive right now that their punishment is to live under the iron rod rule of Jesus and us for 1,000 years. And what that means is this. I'm not asking you to do something. I'm telling you what to do. And if you don't do it, there's going to be a consequence to be paid. And there's no rebellion. And so the age of grace ends at the return of the second coming of Jesus. There's a rapture. There's the last seven years. There's grace. It's a severe grace during that last seven years. At the end of that, no one ever gets saved again. If you've done some really bad stuff, join the club. If you feel like you've done too much to be forgiven, the devil tells all of us that. God loves you. You haven't done too much to be forgiven. The blood of Jesus is more powerful than any sin that you've ever committed. However, Jesus is the only way to heaven is that he's the, only, he's the only way of salvation. I want you to bow your heads with me. And if you're ready to receive Christ, I want you to say these words. Say, Jesus, I open my heart to you and I invite you to come in to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Give me the gift of eternal life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the power to change and to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a simple. I'm going to ask the praise team to make their way up here. Praise God. Isn't that a beautiful reminder for each one of us? You know, um, Pastor Jimmy Evans encouraged us, let us enjoy this life. While we are living here, you know, we can save we can plan our life, but at the same time, don't forget Jesus. Amen. Let us not forget the Lord Jesus Christ. Because one thing we know, our life in this world is very temporary. Anytime the Lord can come, either we will go first or either our Lord Jesus Christ will come first. But nevertheless, we are in a winning side if we always remember God first in our life. Amen. We have some brothers and sisters that are not feeling well. So can we say a prayer for them? Say a prayer and we ask the Lord. You know that our son-in-law received a miracle from the Lord. We give thanks to God. You know, looking at him, talking to him. And then at the same time, I had it documented. And I said, God, it is only you. It is only because of your strength that he is alive to this day. And he is watching right now. So we love him. And we are thanking God for the strength. We have Brother Nars. We love you, Brother Nars. We thank God also that he is well. So let us pray. And many, some of the brethren that are just quiet. You know, when, when, when Rodell was sick during that days, I was just sitting. Nothing matters anymore. No amount of money matters anymore. All it matters is the life of this man. And, you know, there is no amount of money that we can give to God in replacement or to pay a good health that we have. So my brethren, I am encouraging you here. We enjoy this life. We enjoy a good health. 
Let us always remember the strength that we use, the mind that we have, it all comes from God. That's the reason why when it is time for offering, we are happy to honor the Lord. Amen? The Lord will, each one of us, my brethren, will stand before the throne of God. In my meditation this morning, that is so strong in me, we will give an account to the Lord. First, how did you treat my body? which is his church in this world. In your lifetime, you are fully, you understand that God saved you. And when we die, we are going to be with the Lord forever. But the Lord will be asking us and we will give an account. How did you treat my church, my very own body? Did you just use it? As a, did you just become a consumer, enjoy the program, enjoy the benefits, but did not become a part or participate or carry the burden of a local church? God said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We have existed over 30 years. We have experienced many, many things. But since we know that God called this church, we have experienced the victory after victory. Each one of us will give an account. Did you support my holy work? God is not upset when you are looking after your own personal care. You know your own, your household, your own affairs, your family. That is our responsibility. That is right. And God is pleased when you take care of your children, when you take care of your health, when you take care of your career. But how about your local church? What kind of contribution do you do? Do you bless it and honor God through your giving? I am so grateful to the Lord because in the existence of this church, there are people that are faithfully supporting the holy work of God through their finances. I am so, I am, my question to you, my brethren, how about you? Do you support the work of God? And how about in your strength, in your energy? Do you use your energy? Do you use all of your energy at your workplace, at your family, at your hobby? How about the work of the Lord? What kind of contribution did you do to support the work of the Lord? My brethren, we are living in the last days. God wants us to enjoy everything in this world. But please, do not forget the work of God. That Jesus Christ died on the cross so that each one of us can enter into his kingdom. And God is using his church to proclaim the good news. So that is one thing that you will give an account to God. How did you treat my church? Second, how do you treat my own beloved country, Jerusalem, Israel? Let me tell you this. You are fully aware that 10% of the income of this church, Tita Nitz just gave me a, a number, 60 to 70 my brethren, more than 10%, another 20% just like going out to the mission of this church. You know, we, you know, there are about so many local church, so many Jewish ministry that we have supported and they just say thank you. Thank you for standing by with us. God loves Israel. Yes, God loves everyone, but the Lord loves the Israel, the Jewish people. We understand that. That's why we are supporting the Jewish ministry, reaching out 
proclaiming the true Messiah, Jesus Christ. Skyway, it's summertime. Wonderful to enjoy. Wonderful to have a family time. Good time to go for vacation. But please, do not forget that rapture can happen anytime while we are on vacation. So let us still be a Christian even during summertime. Do not forget the holy work of God that he shed his cross on our behalf. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand up and worship the Lord. Father, I thank you for your people, oh God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your whole God, for your holy, holy presence. Lord, I thank you for the privilege and the honor of supporting your holy work. I thank you, Lord, for the strength that we use, the mind that we have, the energy that we have. We know we receive it because of your grace, because of your goodness. And that's why, Lord, out of our respect and love to you, Lord, we are happy to support your holy work. Thank you, God, for the privilege and the honor. We will continually worship you, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord, for healing Rudel. I thank you, Lord, for your healing that is flowing to his body. I thank you, Lord, for healing Brother Nars in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord, for the life that you are adding to each one of us. Thank you, Lord, that we enjoy good health. We enjoy good mental strength. We enjoy a happy family. We are free. You provided everything we have. You protected us. You heal our body. You save our soul, oh God. We have hope, we have peace, we have joy. God, we receive, we enjoy all of it. That's why, Lord, we are honoring you and worshiping you this day. We bless you, Lord. And bless your people, O oh God, as they honor you in their giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Can we just lift our hands up once again? Let's just worship God. Let's just honor Him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we are truly grateful and thankful, God, that you shed your blood for us. By your blood, Lord, we are redeemed from every curses of the law of sin and death. By your blood, Lord, we are cleansed, sanctified, consecrated, Lord, washed from all our sins, O oh God. And by your blood, Lord Jesus, we have the victory over the wicked one, Lord. And today, God, as we stand in your presence, Lord, we humbly pray that you will, Lord, consecrate our hearts and mind and soul and spirit and body with your blood. We pray, God, that you will fill this place with your presence, Lord, and with your glory. We humbly pray for your anointing and for your living word, God. Yes, Lord, to be spoken today, that we may live as our Lord Jesus Christ has said. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of your mouth, O oh God. Lord, we just want to say thank you for giving us another day and time in this place that we can be together, O oh God, exalting, magnifying your holy name, giving you all the glory, God, and all the honor and praise that you deserve, O oh God. We thank you, God, for commanding your favor, your blessings to come upon us today, Lord. O oh God, we cast the enemy out. We take no notice of the enemy we cast him down we bind him in the mighty name of jesus lord we just want to say thank you to you be the glory god and the honor and praise bless now your people in jesus name amen and amen remain standing god bless you thank you lord we're going to continue the series that talks about god's way and we've been talking about um Hi, <laughs> and Lord bless our children and bless their Sunday school teacher. Amen. How many of you are happy to be here today? Amen. <clears throat> I just want to welcome uh, our families in the Philippines. God bless you. Uh, Brother Boyet, <laughs> and, and of course, Flora and Bianca and Dan, God bless you. And those of you who came for the first time, we just want to welcome you today. And of course, our uh, online viewers, our brother and sisters who still are staying at home, okay, enjoy the service today. And for those of you who went away for a vacation, I know it's a Canada day. <laughs> you just want to enjoy your, your extra day off, so God bless you. But don't forget to tune in because the message will truly bless you today. Okay, so let's turn our Bible once again because we're talking about today we're, uh, the message uh, that we've been, you know, uh, hearing for the last three Sunday that talks about the way that leads to financial favor and blessings. Okay, and, you know, I am fully convinced that everyone wants to be blessed. Amen. Okay? Everyone wants to experience God's favor. Amen? Now, there's the thing here. God has a way. It's not our own way, but God's ways. Amen? So, let's just first establish the scriptures. Joshua 1.8. We're going to 
read these scriptures here. Okay. In the book of Joshua, you know, as God commissioned Joshua to bring the nation of Israel into the land that he promised. And think about this, guys. The nation of Israel did not just simply step their foot into the promised land. It has taken them years of battle just to possess the land that God promised to them. And the question is, why? Because, you know, God's blessing has a work. Amen? And Joshua and the nation of Israel needed to know God's principle in order for God, okay, to fulfill what he promised to them. How many of you know that it's important for us to know God's word so that God can fulfill what he promised to you and me? Amen? Okay? So it says here, this book of the law or the word of God shall not depart from your mouth. Means speak the word of God, the promises of God over your life, not on what negative things that you're going through in life, not what you feel, not what you think, is speak God's word. Amen? That's the first step. And then, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Spend a time, not just only reading through it, but understand the meaning. What's the purpose? That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Don't skip a word, okay? Don't have, I mean, don't obey God's word um, uh, partially, but fully. That's what God is saying here. Once we fully, okay, do exactly according to what God said, God said, for then you will make your way prosperous. It's an automatic result, okay? When you and I do what, okay, when you and I do exactly what God said, it's an automatic result that it will bring God's favor and blessings into our life. And then you will have good success. So God gives his word so that he can give you and me his way, a direction so that you and I would know what to do and you and I will prosper and will experience success. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord. Okay, let's just read it. One. You know, the reason why I am... A kind of repeating this word so that we can practice what the Bible says. Amen. Remember the Bible says faith comes by. Faith comes by. <laughs> okay. So we need to hear the word over and Okay. So that's why I am making you hear the word over and over again so that you and I will not forget. Okay. It says here, the blessings... Proverbs 10.22, is it up on the screen? Okay. Proverbs 10.22, the blessing of the Lord makes one. How many of you wants to be rich? Only few people? Okay, fine with me. <laughs> the blessings of the Lord makes one rich and he had no sorrow with it. Okay. Now, how many of you know that those are good words? Hello, am I talking to uh, someone here? Okay. <laughs> Those are good words, right? Yeah. Now, I'm going to make you read another word again. And would you promise to God that you will not shut your ear down? Amen. Okay. Can I get an amen? amen? Okay. So we'll begin. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, all the way, um, all the way to verse 12. Okay. You made a promise to God, okay? It says here, will a man rob God? I want you to read the word of God with me loudly, okay? Or out loud. We're going to begin again. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way we have robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, 
so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. May the, the Lord bless his word, and you may be seated. God bless you. Okay. <clears throat> so we're, we're talking about God's ways. Okay, remember in Isaiah 55, God said to the nation of Israel, My ways are better than, my ways are higher than. Okay? So the reason why God said that, okay, it's a natural reaction from a person, okay, from a human being to use their own reasoning. There's nothing wrong with that as long when we use our reasoning it conforms to the way of God. Amen? Okay? The reason why we have to establish that God's ways is higher than our ways, better than our ways, so that whenever you and I make a decision, okay, whenever you and I make a decision, especially in our finances or whatever decision you, you and I needed to make, we depend on God. Amen? Because we know that when we depend on what God said, there will be a success. Amen? Amen? We are, okay, we are uh, protecting ourselves from any troubles and problems. Do you agree with me? Okay? Many, many times, the reason why you and I are experiencing Okay, one way, problems and troubles, it is because of wrong decision, right? Okay? But when we follow God's ways, it brings peace, amen? That's why we've been talking about God's ways that leads to, to life, okay? God's ways that leads to peace. God's ways that leads to happiness. God's ways that leads to spiritual victory. God has given us all his principles, his ways, so that you and I will experience exactly what he promised to you and me. Amen? Today, we're continuing the message about God's ways that leads to financial favor and blessings. You know, I kind of... Um, um, established to you that God will never compromise his word, okay? God will never bend his will to our will. Either it's his way or no way, okay? So we have to follow God's ways. You know, uh, for the last two Sunday, we talk about these things, and uh, we talk about the ways to experience financial favor and blessings, the object of our giving, okay? So I don't need to go through that. Today we're going to be talking about the purpose of giving. You and I needed to know the purpose, why God commanded his people to give. Did you ever ask yourself a question, if God has a purpose, right? Okay, so you and I needed to know the purpose why God commanded us to give, or the reason why you and I needed to give, okay? Let me just give you, first of all, the meaning of the word purpose so that you and I will understand God's purpose, okay? Purpose simply means something set up as an object or end to be attained, okay? So when God commanded the nation of Israel to give, okay, he has a reason why he commands the nation to give. How many of you know that when God, get, when God says something or commands something, he has a purpose? Okay? Now, in order to understand, again, is to know the reasons why God gave his only begotten son. For us to understand this principle is for you and me to go back, okay, when God gave Jesus to the world, what was the purpose of God when God gave his son Jesus? Is there any purpose? Right? There's a purpose, right? Jesus did not came down here for nothing. He came down to fulfill God's purpose why he became a man. And what is God's purpose? So that Jesus can take your place and mine. Amen? Amen? 
so that Jesus will die on the cross, shed his blood, suffered and died, so that, this is a purpose, God can pay the payment for our sins that we cannot pay on our own. Amen? So that you and I will be reconciled unto God. So that you and I will experience forgiveness. So that you and I will be forgiven and not be judged by God. We can talk about a lot of purpose why God sent His Son, Jesus. Remember in John 3, 16, For God so loved the word that He... What was God's purpose in giving Jesus to the world? So that the world might be saved through faith in Him. Amen? So God has a purpose why he gave Jesus. And so God also has a purpose why he commands his people to give. Okay? The scriptures we read a while ago in the book of Malachi pertains to the nation of Israel. And how many of you knows that God has a reason? I want you to follow this carefully. How many of you know that God has a reason why he gave this word to the nation of Israel? Okay? One of the main reasons the nation of Israel began to forget and neglect, okay, the commandment of God that he gave to them. And because of that, there, is, there was a negative result, okay, on the temple of God and there was a negative result on the people of God. And too often, we ask the same question. Why things are happening in our life the way we're not expecting it, right? Did you ever ask yourself a question? Why these things is happening to me? I don't want these kind of things in my life. Well, there is a reason. The nation of Israel said, I, I mean, asked themselves the same question. And so God gave them the reason. God wants you and me to be blessed. In fact, it is his promise, okay, in his word that everyone who knows him, loves him, fear him, will experience his favor and blessings. Provided, okay, we have to know first his word and then confess his word, and then obey his word, okay? Now, let's begin with number one. Say number one, okay? If there's number one, there is. <laughs> if there's number two, there is. Okay, so I'm going to give you seven, okay? So, we're going to begin with number one. You and I needed to understand the purpose why. God commanded you and me to give, not just only the nation of Israel, but his church. How many of you know as the nation of Israel is the people of God, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ is God's people as well. Amen. Amen. Remember, if you read the whole Malachi, God even said, I am the Lord your God. I do not change. God doesn't change his word. Okay. Because if God changed his word, we are in big trouble. Isn't it the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Imagine, we human, we change a lot, right? Especially the women, they change their mind on what clothes they needed to wear. They change their mind oftentimes. For men, they settle, you know, uh, uh, they rarely change their mind. <laughs> Okay, but I'm, I'm not going to go into that thing. Okay, let's go on the, the main point, okay? One of the main reasons or purpose why God commanded his people to give is this, to test our faith and our love for him. To test our faith and our love for him. How many of you knows that if you don't pass the test, you stay where you are? Okay? Unless, you know... When I was in elementary and high school, I passed elementary and high school because we have this, what we call, pasang. <laughs> the reason why they pass me, because they, they pity on me. <laughs> in God, it doesn't work like that. He has mercy on us, but you're going to stay there. If you don't pass grade one, you're going to stay in. 
That's why a lot of people are still in grade one. Okay? So in our faith, don't stay where you are. You, you have to move up. Amen? The Bible says you and I needed to grow maturely. Amen? Psalm 7, 9, the scripture says, For the righteous God tests the hearts and minds. Why God tests our hearts and mind? Okay, let me explain this to you, okay? Because our heart is where the decision made. Because our heart is the very center of our desire. Remember, God needed to be in the very center of your heart and mind, right? As long as God doesn't control your heart, you and I will always struggle on what decision you and I needed to make. So when God gives his word, okay, it comes to our mind. Why? Because our mind is where we reason things. Hello? Okay? So when you and I hear God's word, did you ever experience, and you know, you and I need, knows this. We always struggle accepting God's word because our mind thinks differently to what God says, right? Right? We always create a reason or excuses because we think differently from what God said. And there, and that's where the struggle is. That's why when God gives his word, he tests your mind. How do you know that you and I are beginning to come against the word of God? Because we do not accept God's word as it is. We use our reasoning to change the meaning of God's word. And when our mind began to, okay, make our own reasoning, it goes down to our heart. Okay, when our heart, Okay, when our mind took control of our heart, and our heart, then our heart began to make a decision based on how we reason out. Our heart is where the desire and the decision has to be made. So, the Bible says, for the righteous God tests the hearts and mind. Psalm 105 verse 19, the word of the Lord tested him, which is Joseph. The story of Joseph when he's going through uh, troubles, you know, knowing that he has a, God has a promise on him. Yet, when God gave him a promise, what he's experiencing and going through in life is something that uh, seems contradicting what God promised. But Joseph kept his faith in God. And this is where you and I needed to understand these things. When God gives you and me a promise and we are obedient to his word, it doesn't mean that everything will go well and fine with us. Amen? Because the enemy will try to attack God's word. So we have to keep our faith. Okay? So, but we're just, uh, you know, taking the word how God will bring a testing on our faith and our love for him. We will find this in the life of Abraham. Genesis 22, verse 1. Okay, let's just read that. Genesis 22, verse uh, 1. Okay. We're going to start on, on these uh, scriptures. It says here, Now it came to pass after these things that God, what's this word? Tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. We know the story, right? Okay, so we could see from here, if Abraham was tested in his faith and love for God, how many of you know that you and I will be tested as well? You and I are not exempted, okay? And the testing is about giving. When God told him to give, okay, how did Abraham respond? If you read the whole thing, when God gave, this is God's command to him, then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. And what's his word? And offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. How did Abraham respond? Right away, the early morning, he got up, took Isaac. He did exactly what God said. Never delay, never reason out. 
He might, been, he, might, he might have been struggling in his own reasoning, but he did exactly what God said. Verse 9, it says here, we're just trying to save some time. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And that's his word. And he bound Isaac and his son, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Do you see how Abraham was so obedient to God? How many of you knows that if you are in Abraham's uh, position, how many of you knows that you will struggle? You will cry and say, oh God, oh God, no, 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 no. Mind you guys, the, Abraham could have said to God, God, I'll give all my gold and silver, all my cattle unto you, Lord, not my son. How many of you know Abraham can ask God for that, right? Can I tell these guys why God commanded Abraham to offer Isaac? Because God doesn't want anyone to take his place in Abraham's heart. Okay? So, Abraham is about to sacrifice, slay his son. On verse 11, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him for, what's this word? For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Wow. God said, now I know. How did Abraham prove his faith and love for God? Remember, God made a personal promise to Abraham, right? I will make you a, a, a father of a nation and a father of many nations. I will give you a land. If you are Abraham, you say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But when God gave the condition, I don't think Abraham was praising God at that moment of time. But he kept his faith in God. <clears throat> because he proved his faith and love for God by obeying God, doing exactly what God said, okay, the angel of the Lord, which is, okay, the pre-incarnation of Jesus our Lord, he says, now I know, okay, that you fear God since you did not withheld. Can I tell these guys, withholding what God commanded you and me to give is a show that we fear our condition more than God. We love things more than God. Okay? And look at the result. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham on verse 15. Okay? Okay? Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done these things. Means you obey, you did exactly what I have said, okay? And have not withheld your son, your only son. That's his word. Blessing I will. And multiplying as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nation of the earth shall be blessed. What's his word? Because you have obeyed my voice, my word. Okay? Why? What's the purpose of God? Why he commanded his people to give? To test your faith and mine. And our love for God. Why? Because if we believe more our condition, if we believe more on ourselves, more than what God can do, if we love material things more than we love God, I want you to know this, guys. You and I will fail to experience the promised favor and blessings of God. If Abraham withhold his son, he could have had his son but he lost, he lost, he would lose, okay, in experiencing what God promised to him. Many Christians today are not experiencing what God promised to them. It is because they fail to do exactly what God said. 
Too often we ask ourselves a question, why am I going through this kind of life? Why am I experiencing these things? How come the promises of God is not happening in my life? I want you to know this, guys. The problem is not on God's end. The problem is on our end. Amen? Okay? So the first one is to test our faith and our love. The testing of Abel and Cain. You know the story, right? The Bible says it came to pass on Genesis 3. Okay, verse, uh, Genesis 4, verse 3 and 5. Okay? Okay, let's see. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. He brought an offering, but not what God required. Abel also brought the firstborn. That's the key there. The first fruits, the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord, what's his word, respected Abel or accepted, honor Abel and his offering. What's his word? But he did not respect or but he rejected Cain and his offering, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Cain failed to do exactly what God commanded him. That's why God rejected him. God rejected his offering. Now, we don't want to be rejected by God, right? Okay? But this is the thing here, guys. It is our action, okay, that will okay, cause us to be rejected, or it is our action that contradicts the will of God that will make you and me fail to experience God's promise, favor, and blessing. Matthew 19, 20, verse 22, the testing of the young rich man. I'm just going to tell this story to save some time. Remember, he came to Jesus, master, 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 the young rich ruler. Okay, he said, what shall I do in order for me to inherit everlasting life? Apparently, this young man knew that he's going to grow old and die one day. But he is rich. He knew that his riches will not give him eternal life. And he knew that Jesus is the teacher of the law, inspired by God, anointed by God. Okay, so he came to Jesus, said, what shall I do? First, Jesus tested him how well he knew the scriptures. What does the scripture say? And so he kind of recited all those things. Okay? And he said, okay, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. And then Jesus said, okay, there's one thing you lack. Are you really serious in, uh, okay, uh, knowing how to get everlasting life? And the man said, yes, Lord. Okay. I want you to sell all your possession, give them to the poor, and follow me. How many of you know that that word doesn't apply to a person on a, on a different occasion, okay? Jesus uses that testing specifically for that young man because Jesus knew that that young man is possessed by his possession. The Bible says the young rich man left Jesus sorrowful, sad, because the Bible says because he was very rich. He was already rich, and yet he's not willing to do exactly what Jesus said. How many of you know that if we become unwilling to do exactly what Jesus said, we will miss God's favor and blessing? Amen? Okay? So, Abraham uh, passed the test. Abel passed the test. Joseph passed the test. Cain and this young rich man Fail the test. In summary, to pass the test is simply to obey God, no matter what our own personal reasons, defying fear, doubts, and unbelief, even our own personal desires. So, one of the main reasons why God commanded his people to give is to test our faith and our love for him. Do you believe yourself? more than you believe God? Do you love material possession more than you love God? Amen? Okay, so the second one, to express our gratefulness and gratitude to God. 
It's our opportunity to prove to God that you and I are truly grateful and gratitude to what he has given to you and me. Psalm 116 verse 12, this is what David said. What shall I render to the Lord, what's his word, for all his benefits toward me? Wow. For all his benefits toward me. What, sh- what, what the psalm is saying here, what can I do, what can I give in exchange to what God has done for me of all the things that God has given me. What can I do and what can I give in exchange for all God's benefits? Let's just review the benefits of God. God created you fearfully, wonderful, made in his image. Amen. He loves you. He saved you from judgment. He forgave you and me. He gave you and me everlasting life. He protects you and me from evil. Save you and me from judgment. Oh, I can name so many, many things about what God has given to you and me. Okay? Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5. In response to that, David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his... Ah. The reason why many Christians doesn't show, okay, gratefulness and express their gratitude unto God, okay? It is because many Christians are having dementia problem. (laughs) Or Alzheimer problem. What is the dementia? You are forgetting who you are. (laughs) Forgetting your past, right? And this is what the this is what the psalmist says. What shall I render to God for all His benefits? Okay. David said, "Okay, bless the Lord of my soul and forget not." When Christians forget what God has given to them, what has what God has done to them, they will not show, okay? They will not express their gratefulness unto God. They will not show their gratitude unto God. Remember, human nature, when you have done something good to a person and they forget it, they have done you wrong, you say, oh my goodness. It is the same thing with God. When God has done you and me many, many good things, okay, that we don't even deserve, it makes the heart of God sad. It breaks the heart of God. And this is what happened to the nation of Israel. They forgot that God was the source of everything they had. The protection, the life, the prosperity, the success. They began to withhold what belongs to God. It is because they forgot that all the benefits that they enjoy came from God. And this is what's happening with many Christians. They forget all these wonderful benefits. Let me ask you this question. With all those benefits I mentioned to you. If God will require you to pay all those things, first question, you and I, would you have the means to pay God? No. We don't have the means. If you know, if you and I, okay, if you know that you're going to hell because you and I violated the the law of God, would you not ask God, God, what shall I do for me not to go to hell? If God would, would say to you, just give me $100,000, you, you will find a way to produce the $100,000, right? Right? If you know that you are dying in three months because of the disease, that the medication, the hospital could not cure anymore, and then you come to God and say, God, how much do you want me to pay to you so that you can heal me from cancer, whatever cancer is that? God will tell you $1 million. You'll find a way to, to get that $1 million to give to God, right? Right? You'll find a way. But if you got no way, in the Philippines, a lot of people can be cured from their sicknesses, but they choose to die because they got no 
money. Because to be hospitalized in the Philippines is very expensive. That's why many people choose to die rather than going to the hospital because they don't want to be a burden to their family because they got no means. So, so they, they, they would rather choose to die rather than to be cured. And for us as a Christian, the reason why God commanded his people to give is so that they can show to God that that his people are truly grateful, okay, and they have this gratitude unto God. I want you to know this, guys. With all the things that God has given to you and me, the Bible says they are priceless. There's no amount of money that you and I can pay for them. Now, let me give you, let me picture to you another thing here. Let's say because we fail to give or to obey God when it comes in giving, and you die. And when you face God, and God judges you not to be in heaven, but to be in hell, what would you say to God? You're going to cry to God, right? Right? Come on. You're not just going to have a blank face as if you're not scared, right? You're going to cry unto God and say, oh, God, oh, God, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to spend my eternity in hell. God, what shall I do? Lord, I'm going to go back. I'll give you everything now I realize. Would you not say that? Come on. You would say that. But the bad news is this. When a person dies, God will say, I'm sorry. It's too late for you. Remember, it is destined for men to die once after that. Why do we need to die and be in that position when you and I can do it while we are alive? While you and I have this opportunity. Amen? Amen? So, the second purpose is to express our gratefulness and gratitude to God. That's the second. The third one, to keep us from sinning against God. The third purpose why God commanded us to give is to keep us from sinning against God. Okay, let me show you in Malachi again, okay? Chapter 3, verse 8. Hmm. Where did I go on Matthew? Okay, it says here, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say in what way we have robbed you in tithes and... Okay, so God is talking to the nation of Israel. Imagine, this is the nation of Israel. God is complaining or bringing his case against the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel have been robbing God. Okay? And then it says here, In what way we have robbed you, God, in tithes and offering. Now, what's this word? Not bringing what belongs to God makes you and me. Let me say this word. I include myself, Okay? Not bringing what belongs to God makes them, the nation of Israel, makes you and me, okay, that's his word, a thief and a robber. Because that's what God said, right? Now listen, to steal what belongs to God is a sin and causes us to miss heaven. And I want you to know this church, and for those of you who are watching, the reason why God gave you and me his word, because he wants you and me to be blessed. Amen? 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 Amen. And the reason why I am sharing this word to you, because I want you to be blessed. Amen? Amen. Okay? You still love me? Amen. Oh, God, it's a, it's a nose. 
<laughs> okay? Now, what's this word? Not bringing, okay, what belongs to God makes you and me a thief and a robber. Okay? How many of you know that in the world we live, or even here in Canada, if you steal something, you go to? Ah. <laughs> okay? To steal what belongs to God is a sin and causes us to miss heaven. Pastor, you're saying a word out of the scriptures. Do you want to see in the scriptures? Do you want to know it? Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. This is what the Apostle Paul says. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Let's continue. Paul says, do not be deceived. By whom? By the devil and those people who are deceived. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, one, nor idolaters, two, nor adulterers, three, nor homosexuals, four, nor sodomites, five. What's his word? Nor. Uh, okay, can we read? Nor. Okay. Nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will. Ha. Ah. Why God, why God told the nation of Israel? Because God doesn't want them to miss heaven. Why God gave his word to you and me? Because God wants you and me to make it to heaven. Amen? Amen? Okay? Are we, are we clear on that? I did not make up a word. Okay? That's why God commanded you and me to give to keep us from sinning against God. In what area? Can I tell these guys, do you know that many, many Christians doesn't know this, that when they take what belongs to God, okay, taking what belongs to God, okay, has the same degree and level of offense with all the things that Paul mentioned. Yet we Christian. Okay, oftentimes we condemn those sodomites, those termites, okay, and those adulterers. We did not even realize that there is a sin in the church. And what, what is that sin? A sin of taking what belongs to God. Wow, I did not even realize that. In my early Christian life, remember I, we testified in my early Christian life? Because of my uh, mismanagement of my finances, it affected my finances, my giving to God. I thought my life is going to get better, okay? Little did I know that God will never compromise his word until I follow God's principle. We came out out of that financial difficulties, okay? Number four. Okay, I hope you will remember this. You know, I want you to know this, guys. The message that I share with you that God gives us on Sunday, do you know how many times I listen to it? Sometimes two times, three times. Why? Because I, I, I know the word of God is good. Amen? So I listen to it over and over again. Number four, not just only to keep us from sinning against God, to protect us from curses. Okay? Verse 9, it says here, okay, after God said that, God said, because you've been robbing me, taking what belongs to me, the outcome is this, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, it is so ironic, because if you will go back in the book of Genesis, God made a promise of blessing to them, right? Right? God wants them to be blessed. But then God said, you are cursed. Now, did you ever notice? I want you to notice this, guys. God never said, I am cursing you now. Did you ever notice that? God never said that. Did, I, did you remember And I told you when you and I, either ignorantly or knowingly, intentionally or unintentionally, when we violate God's word, there is an automatic result, right? It's not God anymore. God set all the laws in place. And so, whether you and I know it or not, like it or not, when you and I violate God's laws, there are an automatic result. 
We have to understand that, okay? God is protecting me from being cursed. Satan is the one that causes you and me to be cursed. And Satan knows how to do it. Do you know how Satan does it? He convinced your mind, okay, to disobey God and nothing, nothing negative will happen. That's what he did to Adam and Eve. When Eve said, oh, God said, if we eat this fruit, if we even touch it and eat it, we will shall die. You know what Satan said to, to Eve? Oh, no, 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 no. You will not die. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. What Satan saying, oh, don't believe God. And so Eve disobeyed God. Right? And that's the same thing that it's happening to you and me. The reason why God commanded you and me to give what belongs to him so that Satan has no ground to bring you and me into the uh, place of curse, curses. Okay? Rather, a blessing. Curses, what's this word, can come at any form. At any time. At anywhere. At any given condition. Satan knows it. God gave his word to protect you and me from curses. Amen? That is the fourth reason. Okay? Now, let's say the word number five. Okay, let me just... Finish this word. Deuteronomy 11, 26, 28. God said, Behold, I said before you today, blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God. The curse if you do not obey the commandment of the Lord your God. It's an automatic result. Number five, to live under open heaven. Why God commanded you and me to give? So that you and I will live under open heaven. Okay, verse 10, A. Bring all the tithes into the, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord. Let, let that just finish that, okay? The Bible says on verse, um, okay, if we will continue that, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it. What does it mean to live under open heaven? Our prayer, first of all, will not bounce back to us, but it will reach heaven. Imagine, especially the religious leader in Israel that Jesus, that Jesus confronted, and many people in Israel. You see how those people in Israel are praying on the wall of Jerusalem? They go like this. Right? Even if they will do that a thousand times, a million times, if they violate the will of God, their prayer is just bouncing back on them. And this is a thing that we don't even know. If we fail to do what God said when it comes in, I think, let me just, God always and always and always wants you and me to experience his promised favor and blessings. Excuse me, but it's all up to you and me to do what God said, okay, on how you and I will experience God's blessing. It's all up to you and me, okay? The fifth reason is for you and me to live under hope and heaven so that our prayer, okay, will not bounce back to us, but it will reach heaven. God's blessings will be poured out on us abundantly without hindrance in many ways. Okay, so that's the thing there, to live under open heaven. Sixth one, to protect us from losing what God gave us and what we work hard for. Verse 11, God said, I will rebuke the devourer for your... Who is the devourer? Satan. What's the word rebuke? God will say to Satan, don't touch him. Don't take what belongs to him. Okay? That's what God is saying. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. To protect us from losing what God 
gave us and what we work hard for. Isn't it so sad? You sweat so much, you work so hard, and then you wonder, wow, we're making so much, but we are bringing little things. As if it's not enough. Okay? Lastly, okay, to meet the needs of the work of God. Malachi 3.10, again, let's go back. To meet, okay, the needs of the work of God. God said, bring all, not some. Tithes means 10%, okay? Remember, our church, our church itself give more than 10%. We give the 10% to the Jewish work. And we go beyond that, sometimes 25, sometimes 35. It depends on the needs, okay? The church does it. We do it. My wife and I, my children does it, okay? It says, bring all the tithes, not some, Okay? Into the storehouse. Where is our storehouse? Where is God's storehouse? In every local church, a Christian goes. Okay? That's our storehouse. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. What's this word? That there may be... That there may be food in my house. In those days... Okay, let me say this to you guys. When God brought the nation of Israel... Okay... Because God blessed Joseph twice, so he considered his two sons to possess one tribe. But he set the Levites apart aside. Why? So that the Levites will specifically do the work in the temple. So that they will offer an offering day and night, morning and evening. And this is what God said to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You all can go out on the field and work, and I will bless you. The Levites stay, but there's one thing. As I bless you, because the Levites doesn't have any inheritance among you, because they are, I am their inheritance, they will serve me full-time in the ministry. And the way you sustain the needs of the temple and the workers in the temple you bring all the first fruits into the temple so that the high priest, the priest, the Levites will have something to eat and the needs of the temple will be met. Okay? As long as the nation of Israel obey God, they prosper. But once they stop bringing what belongs to God, the temple suffer, the people who serve in the temple suffer, and the work of God suffer. 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 Okay? So, God's command to rebuild and to meet the needs of the temple. Why God command the nation of Israel and us? Okay, so that we can build or rebuild and meet the needs of his temple. Haggai chapter 1 verse 2 to 11. It's if we read the whole thing, okay, and then I'm going to end here. This is what the Lord said to the nation of Israel, as the time goes by, they were about to be taken by the Babylonian Empire because they failed to live for God. They began to worship idols. They began to erect an altar for those pagan idols. And then they failed to bring what belongs to God. And so this is what God said. Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house shall should be built. The, part, the reason why for the nation of Israel, why they don't bring what belongs to God anymore, okay, and of course the, the temple lie in ruins, they said, no, it's not about, it's not time to build a temple. It's just like what many Christians are saying today, oh, Jesus' coming is delaying. We don't need to really bring what belongs to God. What they're, what they're showing to God is they show that they don't care about the temple anymore. They don't care about the work of God anymore. They don't care about those people who serve in the temple anymore. That's why they don't bring what belongs to God. And the reason why is this. It says, first reason, no, it's not time to, you know, to, uh, to, to help the needs of the temple. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, is it time for you for yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins. One of the main reasons why the nation of Israel are now failing to bring what belongs to God because they are too busy using what belongs to God in, okay, in, 
okay, uh, fulfilling their own personal desires. Okay? And then, as a result, God said, Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Uh, did you see this? Consider your ways. What God is saying here today, hey, can you pause for a second? Are you understanding that you are now beginning to follow your own ways, not my ways? What's this? Because they follow their ways, you have sown much, bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he earn wages, earn wages to put it into a bag with. What God is saying here is this. Everything you work hard for goes to waste. You got no strength, power, means to hold them, to retain them because you are in violation. And this is what's happening to us many, many times as a Christian. For those of you who are watching, this message is for you as well. And the reason why I share this to you guys is because I want you to be protected from the curses that Satan is bringing you and me, but rather experiencing God's favor and blessings. Amen? 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 Okay? There are endless possibilities God can do through us as the church cooperate, participate, and work with God. Let me show you. I prepared a slide, and we will end here. Let me pause this for a moment. When I say there are endless possibilities God can do through any church, any local church, when the people of God who love God and fear God and honor God will see the importance of bringing what belongs to God. There are endless possibilities. There are many things that you and I can do. Okay, let me show you this. Okay, uh, we're going to start on the church uh, sanctuary, Sister uh, Lorraine. This is what you and I can do. Okay. Uh, can we turn up the lights? Uh, is, can someone help me turn up the lights here so that we can see this clearly? Okay. Just to give you a little inspiration, okay? Where is my, who is, okay. So, uh, can we turn up the lights here? Okay. Wow. Can we say wow? Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is what the church can do. You know, we need God. We need prayer, right? We need people, okay? We need faith, but we also need giving, okay? Now, how many of you know that this thing doesn't just appear just like that? Now, these things exist. How did it exist? Then? Because of money, giving, right? This is, this is what we can do. This is what the church, any local church can do. Any believers can do. How would you like having this? Amen. Wow. Amen? amen? How would you like having this? For those of you who are online, amen? Okay. The second slide is there, uh, a building, okay? Church building. Whoa. How would you like to have this? Amen. Come on. Amen. Okay. That's the second one. Endless possibilities. Okay. Next slide, Sister uh, Lauren. Lobby. Whoa. Say wow. wow. <laughs> okay. Another slide. Banquet hall. Okay, wow. Say wow. wow. Okay, another one. Playground for the kids. Wow. Okay, another slide. Whoa, sports arena for the youth. Another slide. Chapel for those of you who wants to get married. Okay, another slide. No more? I think there's some more. <laughs> okay, that's it. I think I have prepared more, but I could not remember um, church love and everything. Okay, so guys, I just showed you. Huh? 
Okay, anyway, so I, I know it's kind of over my time, but this is the thing here, guys. How would you like to have all those things? God wants you and me to have all those good things. Amen? Provided we become faithful in doing exactly what God said. Amen? Okay, so let's all stand up, please. We're going to have a communion. I hope you are blessed with the message today. Amen? Hello. <laughs> okay. All we have to do now is we have to be obedient to what God said. Amen? And you will see the promises of God being fulfilled in your life. I do believe that it's in your heart that you love to bless the work of God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Can we play a little uh, sub praise? Has Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I am looking forward one day we're going to be in those places. Amen. Can we believe God? Can we, can we work with God? Amen. Hallelujah. When Brother Boyd and Flora comes back, they're going to be in a different place and they will say, wow. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, let me just read this word on 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, as we partake this piece of bread that represent your broken body. Lord, we believe in faith. We receive all the blessings and favor that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's partake it. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Lord, as we partake this grave that represent the shedding of your blood, we receive in faith, Lord, all the blessings and the benefits that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's worship the Lord one last time. Can we give Him praise? Hallelujah. Amen. God deserves to be honored, to be praised by His people. Let's worship Him.
Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Okay, Lord, amen. Can we just lift our hands up and thank God for bringing us this day, giving you me and life to have this opportunity to learn in his presence. Thank you, God. Father, we just want to say thank you for your word that you have given to us today. Lord, truly, God, we failed you in many ways, many, many times. Yet your grace abounds more than our sins, Lord, that we committed against your will because you are our God. A God of many chances. A God of grace. Lord, we just pray today that you will give us the faith that we need to stand strong. And for us to obey you, O oh God, to do exactly what you said. So that you and I will experience your promised blessings, Lord. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for, Lord, entertaining so many excuses Using our own reasons, oh God, to the point of contradicting your ways. We ask for forgiveness, oh God. Lord, we have seen how we suffer from the negative consequences of our wrong decisions. Yet you are always there, never leaving us, nor forsaking us. As you made a promise in your word, you will be with us in trouble and you will take us out, out of trouble, oh God. For we are your people, your children, bought and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We pray, God, that you will anoint us, empower us, and fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, O oh God. Lord, I pray for everyone who are watching right now and who will be watching later on, God, as well. Lord, everyone that are here today, God, may you pour out your joy, your peace, your gladness, your love in our heart today. May you strengthen, empower, and fill us today, Lord. May your face shine upon us, O oh God. And I speak, Lord, in the name of Jesus. A miracle of deliverance, a miracle of healing upon those who are oppressed, stressed, distressed, and depressed in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I speak a miracle of deliverance to those who are bound with many different addictions in the name of Jesus to be free. In Jesus' name, our Lord, I speak healing, peace, and joy, O oh God, and fruitfulness, favor, and blessings, God, upon our church, upon your people, O oh God, upon everyone you brought here today. We give you all the glory, God, and all the honor and praise. And this we pray, God, in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. give the Lord a big hand and a shout out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of the day. God bless you. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. There is no rival that could ever stand against your mind. You've always been with us. Have a battle you've already won. We've already won. There is no way that's ever left a mark on you. Come on, that's good enough.
news. Hello everyone, don't forget we have food that's going to be